Um, we're going to talk tonight about the art of the possible, and this was a really important topic for us when I talked uh, to, the, to the staff team here, what should we do about a speaker for the um, AGM, should we have someone that everyone agreed that it's been such an incredible year for us looking at social tech and social media and how can we move the organization forward and expand our reach without actually expanding our bricks and mortar has been an exciting thing for us to think about. And so we, we reached out to Amanda who is with uh, Time Razor and the Framework Foundation. If you don't know about those organizations, you really ought to Google them. They're incredibly great organizations. Anil Patel heads that up and has been an incredible inspiration for me uh, for the last couple of years around social tech. And then I'll just tell you a little bit, a bit about Amanda so you don't all have to read this. Amanda has a keen interest in open technology and data sharing with specific interest in how nonprofit organizations use technology to enhance their mission-related activities. Amanda holds a Bachelor of Arts from the University of Western Ontario in Information and Media Studies and is a graduate of the United Way uh, of Greater Toronto City Leaders Program. Amanda was recently selected as one of the Girls Action Foundation Sparks in the National Light a Spark campaign. She's also actively engaged in Toronto's Emerging Leaders Network, uh, Communications Committee specifically, building awareness and has been building awareness campaigns for Framework since 2009. The framework is really, really well known for its uh, social tech uh, approach and open uh, approach to sharing. And um, Amanda's responsible for Time Razor's national communications, which includes building dynamic social media and cloud computing strategies. And we've, uh, we are well into the cloud at Skills for Change right now, so this is really uh, pertinent for us. So thank you. And uh, Amanda, I'll let you take it over. And there'll be a 10-minute Q&A. So um, think about uh, questions, because we're, we're allowing 10 minutes, right, for questions. Yeah. So there'll be a little bit of time for that. Thanks. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you. Hi, everyone. This is a packed room, which I'm super excited about, especially because we're going to talk about technology. I'm following the barbecue. I get that. Everyone's bellies are full, which is exciting, and we're ready to listen and talk about the cloud. Um, so thank you for inviting me to speak at your AGM today. Uh, and I'm going to just jump right into it with the story. Uh, so framework and right into the story. So the story is about working on a project. Uh, and it's about working on a PowerPoint deck. We've all been there. And so you're working super late on a project. You've spent hours and hours on it, so much so that you probably stayed late on a Thursday night until 8 or 9 PM, maybe even later. You're finally done. You hit save and you go home. Come back the next morning, check in with your colleague and find out that your colleague that was helping you out with the project was also working on the PowerPoint deck, but another version of the file. And the presentation is in 10 minutes, and you got to go. And if only you had been in the cloud and you had been collaborating online, you could have avoided this. But instead, your reaction is this, or even possibly this. And I know that we've all been there before. But what I really want to talk about today is this question. And that is whether technology is a source of frustration or creativity for your organization. And so while I'm going to provide you with a couple quick solutions on how to resolve that multiple versions of a file nightmare that we've all experienced at one point or another, I also really want to introduce you to the idea of uh, the cloud and specifically how we can use the cloud to work better. So how we can share better internally and how we can take some of those sharing successes that we have internally and share it out with the world to better extend our reach. So today we're talking about rethinking technology strategies and I've got a whole bunch of examples, probably too many for the time, so I'm going to go through it rather quickly, but really what I wanted to leave you today with is a whole bunch of examples of what the cloud can do for sharing information and how we can totally blow apart the idea of how nonprofits operate and share. So this is about the art of the possible. Before I do that, I'm going to tell you a bit about the Time Razor program. And why I'm going to do that is not to self-promote our program, although the fourth Vancouver Time Razor is happening in just three hours tonight, which I'm excited about. Um, but it's relevant to the context on how we're using technology and how we're working with multiple stakeholders. So the Time Razor is a speed dating for volunteerism program. Uh, we ask that people, when they attend the Time Razor, they match their skills to the agency's needs. So there's about 30 different nonprofit organizations who attend the Time Razor looking for skilled volunteers young professionals who are looking to get involved but aren't sure how. Then uh, we match them up and pe uh, people are encouraged to bid their time instead of their money on the artwork that's in the room. So we fill the room with up to 30 different pieces of artwork, which we pay for thanks to our corporate sponsors. So artists are paid for their work. We ask 
uh, artists are not asked to donate their work. Our corporate sponsors win because they display the artwork in their office for the year while people are completing their volunteer pledge. And the nonprofit organizations gain skilled volunteers. So it's a win, 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 win program. So how do we pull this all together? Behind the scenes, there's four of us, Anil, myself, uh, Noreen, and Nicole, uh, and we run the Time Razor programs in eight Canadian cities, but we have a network of awesome volunteers. So we've got a network of about 250 volunteers in each one of the cities that we're in, all together. Um, we're engaging with about 125 different stakeholders, so that can be our funders, uh, media, bloggers, um, people who are just generally interested in staying in touch with the Time Razor program. Uh, we're working with eight to ten distinct work plans and this is really important when you start to think about working in silos versus working together uh, and we are really looking at uh, breaking apart the silos and working better across the eight cities but also making sure that the volunteers in each one of the individual time raiser cities can pull off a time raiser without our help because as you've seen there's only four of us um, we get about 200 emails a day, but I will say that probably 150 of those at least are Nell, our executive director, and then we manage the rest. Um, pretty familiar story. Uh, and we have dire uh, requests coming in from all directions, and this is a story that I know many are familiar with, but it's definitely this idea of multiple requests, multiple time zones, multiple cities, all the time. So about two years ago, we said we have to do this better, and we need to use cloud and web to operate uh, more effectively as a team. So not only do we say we need to pick some better tools, but we need to come up with a motto that makes sense for our organization. And that motto is to create information once, distribute it widely, and access it anywhere or access it in multiple places. And I'm going to go back to this point over and over again in this presentation because I really want to drive home this point that everything that we do with technology is not necessarily about the tools. The tools are cool, but the tools change. What stays solid for us is this idea that we're not working off multiple versions of a file. We're not duplicating effort. It's creating information one time, then distributing it widely, and then accessing it anywhere, which also gives us the ability to work in Vancouver and Toronto simultaneously. So out of that core model, create information once, distribute it widely, access it anywhere, comes this idea that we can, we can start to share the information that um, we're starting to use uh, through our cloud tools. And so we've kind of labeled this model of sharing uh, sharesies, which is a cute name for our value of just sharing everything by default. And so I'm going to give you a few examples of what sharing by default looks like. But for us, I want you to start thinking about some questions that come out of thinking about sharing with the cloud. Questions like, how do we work more collaboratively with other like-minded organizations? How do we prioritize the new ideas that come up against the existing game plan? And then the question that comes up for me in my role all the time is how do I simplify the operations that I'm doing while still scaling my program? And I know that that's an important model for, for skills for change. So let's just jump right into some examples. So all of my examples uh, you can find live on frameworkorg.org. So this is an example of our time raiser budget. Um, and if you, just, you can zoom right in. There you go. So our time raiser buz budget is available on frameworkorg.org. Not only is it available on frameworkorg.org, but this is a Google Doc that is the same version of the file that our staff team works with. So right now, Anil and Nicole are in Vancouver, and as they're uh, updating their expense report and they're spending money on AV and on easels and on working on some of the venue costs, they're updating this document in real time so that our team here in Toronto can see what's going on. Our board can also see what's going on. Anybody can see what's going on because it's live uh, on the framework website. It's one version of the truth. And this is really important when we start to talk about fundraising and financing in the sector. This is one version of how our, our team operates. There's not multiple storytelling with spending. Uh, and so, uh, as I said, this is a Google Doc and uh, it works really well for our team. Next one. The next one is the idea of abandoning the strategic plan. For us, uh, there is no four, five, 20 page strategic plan with a one page executive director summary, but instead we've moved to a red, yellow, and green reporting scorecard. So what you're looking at is a smart sheet. Again, it's embedded on frameworkorg.org. And so uh, what you can see is all of the time raiser programs. So Toronto, Vancouver, Hamilton, um, Edmonton, and where we're at with those programs. And it's as simple as red, yellow, or green. So our team meets monthly, and we literally sit around a, uh, a screen 
and we just yell out, What's, what, where's Toronto? It's green, where's Hamilton? It's yellow, uh, where's Regina? It's red. Uh, when we run into a red or a yellow, our team is then tasked with um, the responsibility of going into the back end and adding a comment for why it's yellow or red and also adding any documents that are important to go along with that city. So things like venue contracts, things like um, if there was a note from any of our artists or any of our nonprofit agencies, we would add that to the back end of the smart sheet. And one of the things that I love about technology is we also have different layers of permission and privacy. So this smart sheet that you're looking on on framework.ca just gives you the red, yellow, and green. But our board of directors and our staff have a password for the back end, which allows them to see the attachments and the comments. It also allows them to see any other extra information that we want to share specifically with our board of directors. But it's just too much information to share with the world, not that we're afraid to share it. It just at some point becomes information overload. And so we're really excited about this method of uh, sharing how we operate. And for us, let me tell you, it has really cut down on the amount of staff time that we have to take going over projects because we know it's monthly, it's red, yellow, green, and we move on. And that's it. Okay, so this one is a bit exciting to throw my hands up, but then also a little bit scary. Um, what you're looking at here is another smart sheet. It's our full fundraising pipeline, and it's available live on frameworkorg.org. And when I say fundraising pipeline, I mean all of our asks. So all of our successful grants, all of our unsuccessful grants, all of our to-be-written grants, whether they were successful, whether they weren't, whether they closed the door in our face, we published it online. Not only that, we're publishing the amount of money we asked for, who's the lead responsible for that fundraising project, because it's not just the four uh, framework staff that are working on fundraising. We're engaging with key volunteers in Calgary, um, in, in uh, Vancouver as well to, to work and help us to raise money and so we want to be transparent about who it is that's working on those lead projects. So you can see here we have a range of people that are working on the projects. We're also where you see the stars uh, on the right. Those are things like whether the sponsorship was in kind or for cash, whether it was multi-year or one -time, uh, a one-time proposal. And for us, 75% um, of our funding is, uh, one, is short-term project-based funding which is a real struggle when we're trying to budget for eight Canadian cities, and again, a story that we're all familiar with. But instead of just saying, that sucks, we're saying, no, it's real, it's really happening. Right now it's 75%, the goal is to change it, um, to both expand our $2 million pipeline and just to get away from all the short-term funding and expand to more multi-year proposals. And so we're telling that story online for everyone to see. And so when we get to the question parts, I'm super excited to hear what you think about this proposal, because it can be a bit scary, right? But it's also totally refreshing and a huge weight off of our executive director's shoulders to just say we're struggling with financial management but this is the story and it's one version of the truth. Okay, so I'm going to, now that I've shown you a couple tools, I want to very, very briefly tell you, tell you a bit about how we pull this all together. So our ICT uh, strategy is quite simple. We have five pillars. We keep it super simple. We've got an office productivity suite, we've got a project management tool, We've got a place where we store and share files. We have to track all of our contact records and, and keep track of all of our accounts and donations. And then we also have this really wonderful tool that I love a lot that allows us to manage contracts. And so while I don't want to spend this evening going through a huge lesson on each one of the tools, I think it's really important to show you a quick example of how we're really using these five tools to give you an understanding that this is really how we operate day in, day out. So the first one is Google Apps. And so I know many are familiar with Google Apps, but here's a good example of a success, a success story. Um, so we're partnered with United Way in London in Middlesex. Uh, they called because they had some questions about uh, funding for that specific time raiser. And so this is the kind of thing where it can take some time. I've got to go back, address the questions that they have, figure out how I'm going to construct an answer and reply. Instead, I just said, hold on a second. I sent her a link to this document over the phone. I said, what exactly are you concerned with? We tabbed down together. We made changes in real time. My colleague, Teresa, was in the office. She jumped on chat to make sure that she could also participate. Hit save, and it was done. So what could have been a budget conversation that could have taken days or even weeks took minutes. Um, and it was done. And it was over. And anybody else that needed to be brought into the conversation could. And it was really a great win for us. The next one is Smartsheet. So Smartsheet is the same tool that we're using for that business plan, the same thing we're using for our project, uh, our, our pipeline, and then this is also how we're managing all of our time raiser projects. So there's one project document, 
and all of our volunteers, our stakeholders, our leadership team, the funders in each one of the cities get access to one document, this one. They can see when we have to book the venue, uh, when we have to pay artists, when the time raiser is itself. Um, we can do things like add some neat and fancy check boxes, add some re core responsibilities, atta uh, attach attachments and documents to a row or a cell, which is great because it keeps everything in one uh, one simple document. So we're really talking about collaborating well with others, but keeping information really, really simple. The next one I know you're familiar with as you've just started to jump into the world of Box.net. I love Box.net. I love it so much I'm going to the Box.net conference in San Francisco next week. I have a Box.net hoodie and a Box.net hat and I'm going and I'm so excited. Um, it has changed the way our team works. Box.net, uh, the quick 30 second pitch is that it's, it's like a USB key on the web, right? You can store all of your files on the web. Uh, we've got a terabyte of data, which means we don't have to think about how big our files are. We essentially, it certainly feels like unlimited data. What we can do, this means we can share Photoshop files, we can share images, we can share video files, uh, and we don't have to give it a second thought. The one success story I have with Box.net is logos. I have to take a deep breath when I think about logos. Um, because logo management in dealing with eight Canadian cities with up to 30 different nonprofits in each uh, city, how often does an organization's logo change? Uh, and how often do we go to print with the wrong logo? I can't even tell you. So instead, now we have one place where the logos are stored. All of our agencies have access to the folder. They can go in and check their logo. If it's wrong, they upload the new version. Then when the media calls me and says, who's participating in the Vancouver Time Razor? Could you send me some media files? It takes me two seconds to send them a link to the same folder, and they can download the same logos. No time at all. And it's this kind of magic that really allows us to better engage and start to scale the program. And you can see all these examples of how you can just store information in one place and distribute it widely and get it off your plate, crossed off your to-do list, and move on. Salesforce. I could give an entire presentation just on Salesforce and my love for Salesforce, but briefly just talking about this is where we store all of our, con our, our contacts, our accounts, how we manage all of our donations, where is money coming in, where is it going out, all of those asks. What I love Salesforce for is our email tracking. So we can track all of our email conversations, which is so awesome when we talk about staff transition or bringing on new volunteers, to, for them to be able to click through and see the last conversation with CIBC, see exactly the last uh, time raiser that a CIBC staff member attended, and then make reference to that in the email when they uh, send them an email about a renewal for a new proposal. They're up to date. I don't have to worry about keeping them up to date in the, la the last conversation. It's magic. Finally, if I had more time, I'd show you EchoSign, but the really brief uh, uh, example with this is that uh, EchoSign is an e-signing solution for contracts. So instead of printing out artist contracts uh, at each time raiser, getting them to sign it, making a copy, storing it in a binder takes hours of work. We just send them an email version. They electronically sign it. It stores a copy in Salesforce, and we move on. It's brilliant. So one thing about those tools that I really want to stress when you start talking about technology I love the tools, but what I love more is that they all talk to each other. So Google Docs is integrated with Box.net that stores a file in Salesforce if we need to that also links back to EchoSign. So really when we're starting to talk about technology, it's how does one tool work with the existing tool that we have? How do we get our data out of project A into project B? How do we move forward with these tools? And so those are the questions that are far more important than um, it, you know, it, should we try version X or Y of the new tool? So this example is when I, I want to move beyond just how we work collaboratively internally, even though I think we're doing a really good job. But it's start to talk about how the tools can expand to do better uh, globally even. So this is our social procurement strategy right there. Uh, it's a Google Doc. Uh, so what you're seeing here is our spending, our social enterprise spending for 2010 uh, and 2011. Our intention is to better support more social enterprises. So you can see that we spent 46% of our printing costs on social enterprises in 2011. The intention is to do more in 2012. Not only that, although that's awesome, um, if you go to frameworkorg.org's website right now, you can download the, you can copy the code for this exact Google Doc um, right you can copy it and you can put it on, on your own website. And the intention with that is 
I'm making it really, really easy for you to share your social enterprise spending. So it doesn't have to be about adopting new technologies. You can grab my embed code, place it on your website, and start sharing. And so if we think about that in the context of even 5% of the 400 organizations that TimeRaiser supports, how exciting is it to align our purchasing power to better support social enterprises and really start to live the values that we're always promoting in the nonprofit sector? And the same goes for the next example, which is getting instant feedback on grants. So right now on frameworkorgs.org's website, you can see the grant that we've written to the Toronto Community Foundation uh, for their, vitals, uh, their Vital People grant. Uh, it's due next week, but I drafted the grant and I put it up on box.net and I embedded the link on the website. And then if you click to the next one, you'll see that I also asked for feedback on our website and we got some of our colleagues in the, in the sector that we really respect and admire to give us feedback on the grant. So we have right now some live supporting feedback from some of our colleagues on exactly how I can make the grant better. They express their support for the grant. Um, and so we already know that we have some community support behind it before the grant's even been submitted. Uh, really exciting. And so just as I wrap up here, I want you to, to remember that a lot of uh, what I've shown you here today have been some quick examples, but you can find all of it on it.timeraiser.ca. That's our IT catalog where we're trying to do the best to capture how we're using technology. So when we select box.net over Dropbox, we write that down. And we tell you a bit about why it is that we selected those tools, the cost decisions around it, and some of the ways that we've implemented that. So we're trying to invest as much time and effort as we possibly can while running all of these time raiser programs to sharing how we're using technology in hopes that others will get on board and start to share the great work that you're doing also. And so what you can see, and so that's just a quick little snapshot of our tool catalog and then next. So if I can leave you with one last thought, it's that I know that you won't pick up each one of these examples tomorrow. I don't expect to see Skills for Change budget and fundraising pipeline up on your website tomorrow I am, although that'd be cool. Um, but instead I want to leave you with the thought, share what you want to share. Use the software you want to use. I love the tools that we've used, but I promise you we'll move on to something else soon, probably. Um, share information that's useful and relevant. So it's not about putting every last document that's on your hard drive up on the web. Nobody's searching through that and it just becomes information overload and you, you, you lose the effect in some of the power of the sharing, like the social enterprise model. And just really know that a lot of this can help you extend your reach um, and enhance client services, which is the point of why we're all in this industry and working together. So it's not about the tool, it's about what the tools can do to really expand your program. That's it, you can find me online pretty much anywhere. Um, and thank you.